it is obviously not the case that when feminist movements refuse to endorse interventions that say they're going in for women's rights, they lose the ability in the long term to stand for those rights. As we told you, those interventions tend to be tokenistic at best when they use that rhetoric. We gave you analysis that ignored in the previous speech, why that is ignored in the long term and why the gendered effects of that violence do not make the differences in decisions. That being the case, it is hugely important that we oppose these wars, so that we have the credibility in the long term when inevitably the wars go wrong and hurt women, we can say, I told you so. I told you that would happen. That we do not have to take individual careers that people said, you trusted that military to do that intervention, and now you're saying they're doing X, Y, and Z against. Why were you so naive? We get that better on our side of the house. I'm going to do a lot of rebuttal to the speech that we had before deepening the analysis in a couple of ways. First of all, I want to talk to you more about why this is always a useful cover. And secondly, I want to talk about damaging long-term feminist change around the world. Because we don't intervene in every state that has problems with gender. We only intervene in a very few. Around the world, there's going to be left to people in those countries, and they need to have the ability to do so. First of all, Marlena says, we never intervene in secular states. The Ba'ath Party was secular, ladies and gentlemen, and it ran around, and it has been replaced by ISIS. Secondly, she says, we do humanitarian interventions all the time for good reasons. We would question the extent to which humanitarian, uh, humanitarianism itself is used in the same way. We'd note there are a lot of states that have huge humanitarian problems that don't get interventions. Seems to be the ones, in a lot of cases, with oil. Seems to be the lot of cases, in many cases, with mineral wealth. We don't think that humanitarianism is a tipping point either in those cases. Then she wants to say, uh, uh, well look, what about Afghanistan? This is clearly contentious in the example debate. I'd rather stick to the principled analysis that deals with general issues, as we told you. But the first thing is to point out the government that is actually not a, a, any real improvement for women in Afghanistan. They're not getting more education because the government doesn't care, it doesn't act when the Taliban firebomb schools all around Afghanistan. Moreover, the fact that we did not build up that state means that the government really doesn't exist outside Kabul anyway. All we've got is a Taliban ruling in the majority of the majority of that country now has far more grassroots support because of the botched intervention that we did in the first place. Then she wants to talk about cultural relatives and she says not all, uh, not all, abu uh, not all abuses are cultural relative. That's obviously what Freddie said. He didn't say that they all were. All he said is that you're likely to get a more western version of feminism that does not match the needs of people on the ground, especially in long-term change. Let's deal with what she said then on why interve interventions don't work. And we told you that they tend to destroy civic institutions that protect most vulnerable members in society and that women tend to be the brunt of the immediate, ca immediate casualties in the long term. All she had with this is, well, we, what about civil war when abuses are taking place on the ground already? For a, vari for a variety of reasons, we don't tend to intervene in si uh, to end civil wars as much. We only really tend to, uh, it's mostly we tend to stop all states. But moreover, in many cases, you do the same thing from the armies that send in to end civil wars. We saw horrendous cases from Fijian and Pakistani UN peacekeepers who we send into those cases committing exactly the same kinds of war rape on a large scale and that that was now going to be Western feminist backed apparently. It gets the feminist stamp. How do we critique those in the long term? Let's talk to what Malena said then on gender as, a ju uh, gender as a justification. The first thing she had to do though was contend Freddie's analysis when he told you that is nearly always a sham. Even if we were going to stand by real feminist interventions, we don't right. get them in the long term because it just aren't the people making that case in the political elites and in the right. military elites who actually run things on the ground in the, lo uh, in the long term. No, fa uh, no thank you guys. But do we delegitimize de feminism as an intervention? So we're quite happy to say that the feminist movement as a general policy right. should always point out abuses that happen. What we're going to say though is that we get less, uh, uh, that those are never furthered by humanitarian uh, by humanitarian intervention, ra uh, rather what happens is that things get worse in those societies. Until we can solve things like male control of the military, yes there are women there but they are uh, systematically discriminated against and never in positions of power for those reasons, then we shouldn't be trusting that, as an inter uh, trusting that as a tool to get those changes. We shouldn't endorse it now until we've solved all the gender okay. problems that go along with military use. Let's talk about 
uh, maintaining the ability uh, uh, maintaining the ability to critique that movement then. Because Fe uh, Freddie wants to say we can have both. You can endorse the war, uh, sorry, uh, Malena wants to say you can endorse the war in the long term and then you can just come out to critique it later. But there's a number of reasons that's not true. Often in public, di often in public discourse, so it's seen as quite binary, we have a pro-war or you're anti-war. Flopping around in U-turn just makes it look like you don't know what you're doing in the long term. But secondly, you are going to have to stand with institutions like the military. You can't say we go, we think the military have enormously gendered All problems this. and we trust them to run an intervention. When it definitely goes wrong, you would have to explain why you didn't think that in the long term. All the this. point out that these are powerful decision makers. No thanks, booming Hawksby. <laughs> Uh, in, in, for example, anti-war movements like the Stop the War Coalition that did have a strong feminist element. They genuinely can affect policies and those critiques genuinely do happen in the long term. Yes. So you can't make those, you have to look, you look like a U-turn in Hawksby. How would it affect your policy if there were large feminist movements or feminist advocates in these countries calling for a military intervention and support? <laughs> In the majority of cases, we say that those people don't tend to do so. They're just as they, they, they are, if anything, aware that these things, te these things tend to go wrong. But there were not the case in Iraq or in Afghanistan that women were coming out onto the streets and demanding West, uh, demanding West intervention, not true. Let's talk about damaging other long-term change, though. The first is to say that we destroy organic feminist voices. There is a secular and pro-feminist feminist, uh, movement within Iraq. It's called the Green Movement, and it is growing. It does work. Even in those cases, in the long term, when we need to do, when we, uh, when we leave those countries, and we leave them to erupt, erect their civic institutions, and we lead to enforce their constitutions, those people will be seen as the people who supported the bombing, as on side with the same agenda that supported the initial loss of life. Let those people have their credibility. Don't tar them with the same brush as the intervention. And this is really important, because in the vast majority of states, this is going to be used to beat native feminists. It's going to be, they are pro-imperialist, they are pro-bombing, they are pro the death of thousands of Muslims across the world, and those people can never be seen as cre uh, credible again. That's especially true, as we told you, when the feminist movement is already perceived as pro-Western, where feminism is not seen as, represent uh, as reflecting the real religious and cultural differences of people on the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, there might be an ideal world in which women could control uh, uh, interventions and use them for their own good. That's simply not the world in which we live. They don't have the influence within the elites that make these decisions and run those interventions, and for those reasons we need to critique them, we need never to support them.